everyone welcome to our analysis of cat 2017 so the d day is here and as reports start trickling in we've seen that a lot of students have taken the first slot exam from 9 to 12 and are coming out with the kind of feedback that we expected from last year's cat as well i was among the students who were part of the morning batch and based on that i would like to give you a preliminary analysis of the first slot as far as cat is concerned of course we will be coming up with a slightly more detailed analysis in a couple of days after we get comprehensive reports of both the slots please keep in mind that any analysis uh, right now is based on feedback received from our students our channel partners as well as our faculty this does not indicate actual questions we will not be divulging details of any actual questions in the exam however we will talk about the trends that we saw in the exam and how this is expected to affect the cutoffs so let's go uh, section by section and then move on to the entire paper starting with verbal ability or even before that starting with the overall uh, logistics of handling the exam in general the process to take the exam remains the same you log in go through the biometric process are assigned a computer of your own and then you start now one thing that was worrying students was that uh, the instructions mentioned that there would be only one scratch pad provided to them please be assured that the number of pages in the scratch pad were more than enough to tackle all three sections so there were if i, I didn't count them exactly but there were easily 14 to 15 pages on a medium size notepad so you had enough space to practice whatever you wanted to or make your scribbles now starting off with the verbal section as we had provided in a few mocks or as we would have expected over a period of time we saw that the overall break up remained the same which was 24 by 10 within the 24 rc questions that we had this time round the first slot had three six question rcs and two three question rcs so five rcs in all which was a welcome change from trying to read six rcs which would have been possible into in the six into two plus four into three format now if i look at the topics of the rcs the first slot was much easier that way because the topics were very contemporary in nature i cannot again divulge the exact topics but if i were to broadly categorize them one would be or a couple of them were on the intermixing of uh, european and american history and geography one would be on cultural changes in the us in certain aspects then there was uh, one on a little bit interpretation of sociology and then again another on contemporary issues so if you look at overall topics they were all they were very contemporary and very modern in nature plus there was a lot of implication of social issues and social aspects into these topics another thing that we observed was that each of these rcs had a mix of factual and inferential questions so there was no one rc where we you could say that everything was inferential there was no one rc where everything was factual in that sense according to us all five rcs could have been attempted in parts there were a couple of rcs that could be have been attempted in full but yes all five should have been tried i would say out of the six question rcs at least two and a half could have been done so 15 questions out there out of the two three question rcs three to four questions were easily achievable so if you look at the overall rc subsection i would say 18 out of 18 to 19 out of 24 attempts here would be a reasonably good performance a good student or a person strong in verbal could have been able to attempt even 21 or 22 out of 24 questions so here we do expect the cutoffs to go higher coming to the theta or non rc questions it would now be prudent to call this part of the verbal section as the non rc section rather than the theta section a big surprise for people out here was not in terms of the types of questions asked but or the breakup for example the generally accepted ratio between 
para jumbles out of context jumble sentences and para summary was maintained i cannot again give you exact numbers but you would have seen in your mocks the roughly the equal ratio 3 3 4 was maintained the big change this time was that the para summary questions were no longer data questions they were conventional mcq questions as you would see them in say an ift or a snap or a cmat which are four option papers so this is one trick which the student could have missed we typically tell students to attempt everything in terms of the non rc questions because they don't have negative marking however here the para summary questions indeed had negative marking and this is something the students need needed to be aware of in the exam scenario on the whole i would say anywhere close to 26 to 30 attempts would be a good performance for this section based on initial reports please keep in mind that this is a very early phase to say anything we also need to await the kind of feedback that we get in the uh, after the second slot in the evening but looking at just the student feedback right now we would say that anywhere between 26 to 30 attempts would be a good performance as far as the verbal section is concerned moving on in the second hour the most difficult the section that everybody is scared of dilr as a dilr faculty i would say my opinion would be that dilr this year was slightly tougher compared to dilr last year now every year dilr is tough so if this was slightly tougher uh, you can imagine the level of difficulty the general feedback coming in from students is that the questions were not or the sets were not very straight forward to understand so you probably had to spend 7 to 8 minutes or 10 minutes just trying to understand how the data is to be shuffled around how it is to be understood and then what needs to be done to solve the question so you did not have very conventional questions that you could see plus there was a lot of emphasis on uh, conceptual areas such as the critical path method or when the applications of when diagrams etc moving away from pure logical puzzles so this was a very very important uh, change compared to previous dilr sections of cat 2015 and 16 in my opinion and again based on uh, interaction with other faculty and student feedback i would say that three full sets plus maybe one or two questions in another set would be a decent attempt at this stage 16 attempts would be a good performance anything more than 16 would be excellent but yes 13 to 15 attempts would also be good we expect the cutoffs to go lower this year compared to the last only based on this slot again we will get a better idea once we move on uh, after the second slot happens an interesting change here was that the paper no longer had sequential numbering what i mean by this is that uh, like always the paper did not start from questions 35 to 66 it had question number 1 to 32 so you had to prepare yourself accordingly a very small but significant change one interesting thing that we observed in this section was that not only were the common data of each set very lengthy so you had a lot of reading to do in one or two cases the amount of data to be read was as good as the data given in a typical three question rc apart from that the data in the individual questions was also worth 4455 lines so there was a lot of reading to do in the sets that is where the number of attempts would have gone down finally we move on to the uh, quant section as expected it was the easiest section in the paper i would say it was at par or even slightly easier compared to last year but i can say at par at the most uh, this is based again on the first slots analysis or feedback we felt that this section was very arithmetic heavy right now again we'll get a better idea as to how the overall quant was at the end of the day but so far the first slot feedback from students is that it was very arithmetic heavy there were a couple of questions here and there which were core concept based with good question selection a student could have easily found 14 to 15 questions that were eminently doable here i would think that 20 attempts should have been a must for any student a well prepared student or a good student could have easily reached 25 as well 
I would typically put 24 to 25 as the benchmark for this section. So having said that, uh, please also remember that the quant section here had a few tricky questions in terms of the answer options 1 and 2 the steps to be arrived at. So if you were trying to solve it very quickly, the questions were easy to understand but if you were trying to solve it very quickly, you could end up marking the wrong answer because you needed a ratio and both the ratio and its reciprocal were in the answer. So that way you could have ended up making silly mistakes in the answer. So there were a lot of easy but smartly asked questions. You needed to be aware of the small traps within each question. More or less easy section, just to summarize, easy to moderate verbal section, tough DILR section and easy to moderate quant section, I would say easy quant section. On the whole, I would say the paper was moderate simply because it was skewed totally due to the DILR section. We expect verbal cutoffs to be slightly higher compared to last year, DILR to be slightly lower, quant may be more or less at par with last year. The number of good attempts, prima facie at this stage, could be somewhere around 25, 15 and say 23. So anywhere between, if I just total that up, anywhere between 60 to 65 attempts should be a reasonably safe performance right now. This is assuming that the person has at least 90% accuracy in these questions. So wish you all the best. People taking in the, uh, the exam in the second slot, hope you all do well. And we'll be back again with a much more detailed analysis or a similar analysis on Monday or Tuesday after both slots are over. Thank you.